Welcome to Fun Friday! Hello! Also known as No Stroke Friday. Here at the Fit Lab, if you have a stroke, you're out. Nobody had a stroke today, so even better. Hey, Phil. <laughs> today, we're going to talk about the carnivore diet, and in I just... my carnivore! All about the meats. And in just two weeks, I'm going to be continuing on the Keto Project movie, going out to California to go meet with Dr. Sean Baker, author of The Carnivore Diet, and also on the Joe Rogan Show numerous times. So we're going to talk about meat and why it's actually really good for you, as opposed to vegetables. Are vegetables not good for us, Jim? Stroke. No, Stroke Friday. No stroke Friday. No stroke so Friday. today, I'm having some grass-fed and finished venison. And I'm also having some venison blood oh, from France. I'm having free-range turkey. No sugar added, no sulfites, no hormones, no nothing. Thanks to Pat's Market, I have, well, awesome meat on my plate. Organic and grass-fed burgers. Uh, it's all I'm eating for the month, if you're not aware of this. Where have you really been? Be aware really, if you're under a rock, you didn't know that what we're doing here with the keto uh, movie. So I mean, it's a huge step up from two months ago. I am actually enjoying what I'm eating. He's not crazy. He's, crazy. He's actually in a really good mood. Really good mood. Yeah, well, yeah, that was a. Uh, there were some rough days for everyone around me back in what month was it? July. 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 So before we get into why meat is good for you and why meat will actually clear up your arteries, it's juicing everywhere. And why the people in the blue zone actually eat meat. Let me tell you, no, Shantae and I are not getting divorced. You may have seen the photos up of the divorce dynasty. I am very fortunate and <laughs> privileged to be part of this wonderful group. It's not what you know at times, it's who you know. And in order to help individuals going through a very rough time, I've joined this group in order to help facilitate individuals, especially men in this case, to make themselves look and feel the best they ever have in their entire life, also be healthier than they ever have in their entire life to get through this difficult period in their lives, no matter how it may have started, and to transition to an even better version of themselves. So check it out at Divorce Dynasty. It's on Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, or Facebook. Facebook. And keep uh, looking for it until you find it. And he's uh, not single, sorry. I'm not single. If I was, I'd be divorced. Let's talk about meat and this delicious deer. Mm -hmm. I do miss venison. It's one of the best things about going home to Amish country. Everyone has it. Hmm. Serious. Come back to pounds of it. Feed the carnivore. Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to be said about different diets and fats. Carnivore diet is... It's another diet. Yeah, it's another big trending term. It's getting a lot of uh, attention. So there's, when there's a lot of attention, there's a lot of conflicting facts. Mm -hmm. So you ate for a month a carnivore diet. I did. You got into ketosis, so you were also keto. Mm -hmm. And you almost died. Yeah, I got very sick. So like therefore, very... eating meat is bad, right? Clearly, on that one case. So that's why you're obviously eating meat again. Yes. So what's the difference between Burger King burgers, 100% all beef, plain broil, plain broil. patties, or 100% plain broil, they didn't say all beef, oh. <laughs> compared to your grass-fed and grass-finished beef that you're eating right now? Well, what I know, the biggest difference I notice is taste-wise, these are so much damn better. Uh, but I mean, the quality of food matters. I'm probably going to compare carnivore to veganism or vegetarian a couple times during however long we're talking today. But um, the reason why is that you can do both and very, very different results. I'll use a quick example of, I'm assuming, I'm going to say everyone knows, but I know plenty of vegetarians that, you know, they just eat a bunch of chocolate and ice cream because that, well, depending on the vegetarian, they just eat a bunch of crap. Mm -hmm. You know, the same thing with carnivore diet. There is a huge difference in quality of meat between fast food meat or organic and grass-fed or just going eat, eating, uh, like, like deli meat the entire time, mm. you know, just... Pastrami bologna, technically, and I don't know what all is in bologna, I'd be afraid to look, but same concept, that's technically carnivore, they are not equal. So there's a lot of differences. Mainly, I actually know where this came from, which is a huge part. I know there's actual vitamins, minerals, micronutrients, and everything in this, and we can protect to a certain extent. Eh, came back. Um, Boomerang! Of the differences and effects of it. And I can already tell you, as Shantae mentioned, I'm not cranky when He's I come not. in the morning. He's not, he was so giddy yesterday. Um, Uncanny. 
Jim Earmuffs. I've had several people ask. I'm actually pooping, so that's a big plus. I, you told me that this afternoon. I was grossed out back then. It's and now that I'm eating, I'm grossed out even more. What the crap? I'm pooping. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh, it's cheeky now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it wants to see Dr. Mike spit out his food. <laughs> I'm eating yet. I gotta eat so much. So what exactly is carnivore diet? Do you have to just eat the meat from an animal, or is it's there parts? Everything you can have on veganism, that's what you eat here. Uh, it has to be from an animal source. Mm -hmm. So talking any meat, you know, beef, fish, chicken. But then a lot of, um, this is where the better quality stuff comes in, is, you know, still their bone broth, um, organ meats, huge things. It's going to come into play a lot with the healthier way of doing it. Um, things that people don't eat, because I've, well, I was picking on one or two people for this. You know, they said they're carnivore diet now. It's going great for them. And they're drinking tequila. So I asked them, what animal source did tequila come from? And they just oh, stared at me, kind of called me an asshole. And then I had to dig deeper. And like, oh, so you still drink coffee? Oh, yeah, I put a lot of heavy cream in the coffee. Like, perfect. Like coffee bean, what animal did that come from? Were they uh, cocoa nib for chocolate? Uh -huh. you know? It's not like they came out of a turtle shit. Like, I mean, it, came, <laughs> it has, if you're going to go with this 100%, there is differences. Oh, yeah. Like that one. <laughs> the turtle one. Because I clean turtle poop he every does. day. <laughs> Find cocoa nibs and we wonder why they come from. Um, well, we'll put so, them in there. <laughs> this has to be animal sources. And uh, that's pretty much the main answer because there are better and worse ways of doing it. Which Does that mean you cannot have tequila on a carnivore diet? Uh, I mean, technically, I would say you can't. Uh, because it's not from animal source. Right. So the CDC, World Health Organization, they're all saying that you eat meat, you eat red meat, you die. A lot of people have said, you know, maybe you should cut red meat back to like once a week. Why? It's a shame. Even with the uh, people are saying, we were talking about this a little bit earlier, you know, in the blue zones, they only eat vegetables. And as Dr. Baker put up in uh, his nice plate, in his nice emotion. plate way was they're Baping liars. No, they do eat meat. Let's talk about the Inuits, for example. The Inuits Great live example. mostly off of meat. Mm -hmm. Meat and fat. And they have very low risk of a lot of diseases, heart disease, liver problems, atherosclerosis, mm -hmm. very low. So all these yogis out there, they're talking about they eat this vegetarian diet and they're healthy this way. Mm -hmm. They may, some may look skinny, some may look very fat. It doesn't really matter in between, depending on what they're consuming the type of foods that they're consuming, the breakdown, how active they are compared to what they're putting in their bodies, what are their hormones doing? Oh my goodness. What you eat plays a huge factor on hormones, plays a huge factor in your gut, and you need meat for both of those, which I think we're even gonna talk about lately. I mean, the Inuits, low levels of heart disease, low levels of kidney disease, low level of liver Almost disease. Acid. And they just eat a crap ton of fat, mm -hmm. like a lot of it, a lot of fat and protein. They've been carnivores, since before the term carnivore was really invented here. Yeah, I mean, blubber and everything part of it. You know, they don't eat just the meat. Again, organ meat's a big factor here it's, uh, to do the healthiest way, in my opinion, at least for carnivores. It's gonna have a lot of vitamins and minerals you don't find in your standard meat. Livers are very- Livers huge. Nutrient dense. Yeah, hey, the animal ate the, uh, ate the plants, and now you get to eat the animal. Yep. So I mean, any highly restrictive diet, where I'm, I'm going to consider a carnivore diet highly restrictive, I mean, pretty much half of what we know you can't eat. Um, so, I mean, typically when you go to a restrictive diet, there's going to be certain things you might want to supplement a little bit, but doing a lot more organ meat, again, liver is a big one. It's going to negate that a lot. So, about hormones, testosterone. A lot of people say that the testosterone levels are low, they went on a vegetarian diet, the testosterone levels went up. Why is that? And then why do you feel that they might be able to get the higher levels eyes? on meat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, why'd you roll your eyes? <laughs> so, bro, here's, oh my. So, going to vegetarianism or veganism, raising testosterone, it probably wasn't eating more plants that cause testosterone raise. Any research I read does not show that. It's probably not eating all the other crap that you switch out of your lifestyle when ah. you went to veganism or vegetarian. We tend not to make this one small change at a time. I mean, if the only change was they're not eating meat, but they're still smoking, still drinking alcohol every day, uh, not exercising, you know, continue the list. 
It's going to be a huge difference. It's a lot better than sugar, pretty much, right? Yeah. It's a better lifestyle than we're living, so their health got better. With vegetarians, so though, off, they're, better. a lot of people are having a lot more soy, which is actually raising estrogen. Uh, which will, Testosterone's not actually going up in that case. It's usually just a change of, great, the first month you ate a bunch better food than what you had previously. So you will get positive changes. How about how to cook it? I mean, you want to kill the thing or a little bit redder, maybe get some more benefits? So I've always been a huge fan of keep things medium rare. And the more I read research, the more I'm right. Oh, so, why yeah. medium rare? Why not just rare? You can do rare. I mean, some people's stomach, it depends on the individual. Not everyone can, we'll say it. Take it very well. So you give me a rare steak and crack a raw egg over the top of it. I'm he's a happy. Kid. I'm gonna be a happy dad. I'm not as great with raw. I mean, if your body, if your digestive system, was to say takes it well, it's great for you. You get a lot. One, there's a lot more of the vitamins and minerals. Does not be mm-hmm. that's well exactly through the heating process. Yep. It doesn't destroy it. The more raw you are, whether it be vegetables, whether it be fruit, whether it be meat, for the most part, fish, raw is that's why better I, with. So you ordered sushi tonight. Mm-hmm. Raw. You did order sushi tonight. Jeez. Well, oddly enough, last you month. You said a month of fish. I mean, yeah. get over it. And you know what was weird fish. was during that month, all I wanted was a damn burger. <laughs> <laughs> it, was so it was like once a week. I'm like, well, I could really go for a steak or a burger right now. Um, you know, the whole one what you can't have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How about oxygenation? Red mm-hmm. blood cells. So, we'll, we'll turn this a little bit because I know we were going, but meat has gotten, for the longest time, gets slammed for being bad for heart health. It's not. Uh, dare I say, it's actually great for many parts of your cardiovascular mm-hmm. system. One is you increase your red blood cell count. Yes, you do. That's great. You need that. More red blood cells, more oxygen saturation of cells. Goes to the brain. So when the heart dies and has heart attacks, it's from lack of oxygen, yes? Correct. Yeah. The wall exploding, the hell with that. Exploding? <laughs> Let's put it in the microwave. <laughs> and then eat that good organ meat. Yes. Um, and then heme iron. Is another big part of it. You're gonna get more of that when it's a little bit more raw. But maybe I'll just try this meat raw tomorrow. Now a lot of people say that by eating an all plant-based, you know, all your greens, mm-hmm. that the chlorophyll in there is just one molecule away from heme. So therefore, it's good. To, you're good to go by eating chlorophyll. And you know what? I bought that for years. Remember that one brand Sorry. that I won't mention right now that I used to eat all the time, and I still thought it was great, but I was eating a lot of Chlorophyll. Yes. Because I thought I was getting my heme. Right. Okay. And yeah. I was going to be better oxygenated from drinking well, algae. Yeah, one thing off makes a huge difference. One chromosome off changes the difference. Uh, I mean, yeah, absolutely. It makes a huge. <laughs> yes. Um, changes your parts, people. Boom, oh, penis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we, the difference between heme and non heme iron is actually quite great. Yeah, it is. Uh, absolutely <laughs> is. It's like getting your. Uh, omegas from plant sources as opposed to getting it from a fatty fish. You're not absorbing it nearly as much, but it's marketed and touted as far better because, hey, it's, you know, algae. Yeah. It's not, no, you're not absorbing it like right. that. So again, back to where sources matter, it matters for individual micronutrients or macronutrients as well. Uh, but no, meat does not destroy your heart. It actually is very cardioprotective. It uh, can help insulin regulation. It can help lower blood pressure. Again, it all depends on the quality of meat. I did not have these effects when I was on Burger King. Not even in the least. Uh, heart rate was surprisingly stayed low, but didn't get lower. How about metabolism? Would, would, would uh, I, if I wanted to lose weight by boosting my metabolism, say it was slow, mm-hmm. should I eat celery all day, or shall I have grass-fed and grass-finished beef? Protein. Why is that protein? Eating your protein? Huh? Huh? I'm not a bro. You're, you're my bro. You're one chromosome. For life, yo. <laughs> Bad boys <laughs> have Repeat question. We ride together, we die together. That's so true. That's so stark. Anyway. Okay. I was just so excited. All right. Let's talk about what metabolism. Metabolism. Yes. Talk about so, yes. Okay. People do tend to lose weight when they switch to a carnivore diet. Okay, right, let's hit the first one first. I said with veganism is it could just, part of it is you're just eating better. That very well could be a part of it, depending on the quality of the meat that you're eating. Uh, second, society is huge. You're so much more full when you, all you do is eat fat and protein. Yep. I was, even, I think it was Shantae I was telling you earlier that I haven't been hungry. I wasn't hungry yeah. for that. It was delicious. But, I mean, I didn't need it. There's a huge difference in the way that protein and fat, again, if you guys haven't heard this from now, you 
probably haven't watched anything that we've done, there's a huge difference in the effects of how long protein and fat takes to digest compared to carbs, which is pretty much spot on. So you're fuller longer, which means you're going to eat less, generally. You will lose weight from that. Mm -hmm. Also, metabolism does raise a little bit when we're eating high protein. Uh, somewhere between 10 and 20% it raises, and mostly it's due to thermogenesis. You need energy. You need more energy to digest. So do you, you think there's actually something behind that meat sweats, which sounds so gross. I really was so against this being a real thing. So in other words, I'm going to take a beautiful woman out for dinner, buy, yes. it, buy steaks, get some A5 Wagyu, have a beautiful bottle of French wine, South American wine, things that we like. Trying to sweep her off her feet, and I'm gonna eat the meat sweats. You that might. sounds that sounds your body temperature will raise. Mm hmm. Hundred percent will raise because there's a lot more, well, a lot more effort in your body has to go through. Yeah, I can only define that so many ways. Yes. Um, so will you sweat? Kind of depends a little bit more on the individual. How much meat protein you ate, how fast you ate it. Your body temperature will rise. It's an inferno, people. It's hot up in here. I was so against the meat sweats rule. <laughs> she sniffed it before. That was the trick. Um, you know, you're getting ready for a competition that doesn't happen, and you're having no alcohol for many, many moons at a time. Yeah, sniff it. like three months. <laughs> to get more on this sweaty meat topic, because why the heck not? Um, sweaty meat, wipe yourself down with bologna. This is going to be a great day. Ooh. Well, it's getting cold. hot in here, people. <laughs> Covered with the strawberries, whatever earlier this yeah, you know, it's like covered fruit. Um, I forget where I was going on this, but meat sweats are a real thing. It's part of the increase in metabolism from eating a lot more proteins. It's more how about let's talk about the gut. What does it do to the gut? I mean, it does not have the types of prebiotic fiber that a lot of vegetables may have. So, what, what does it do to the gut bacteria? So, it actually a lot of times will help correct. Bad bacteria. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets rid of, hate that term, but it gets rid of a lot of stuff that we don't want in our gut lining. Uh, what it also does is that the prebiotic part is that it's not enough typically to help feed the good bacteria. You can lift up that seat, by the way, studio audience. Grab and tuck. Don't feel like the genie has arrived. Right. That works. Okay. Bandit's up. Yeah. Oh, Okay. Nobody can actually <laughs> watching this can see what's going on. So. Not at all. So use your own imagination. It's fine. Uh, the girl who was taking video because our visitors. video guy was in college um, <laughs> to do the thing that he's doing right now and not be successful. He is jet setting the entire country right now. That girl <laughs> just walked in. So, so you're confusing there you go. more people. Larry has no idea what's going on right now. Larry tuned out. It's past three minutes. Past three minutes. <laughs> Cyanar, Larry. Uh, we're talking something about meat. Probiotics. Pro Pro yeah. Probiotics. Gut health. Now, the more raw you eat the meat, the better chance you have of populating yourself with whatever bacteria is out there. It could be good or not. Correct. You're a little risky on that one, but overall, if you're eating well, your gut should be fine. It does come into before I forget one of the few things that you might want to supplement mm. when you go into a full carnivore diet is some short chain fatty acids, believe it or not. Uh, butyrate is the big one that's not in most meat sources. That is raw so meat, good for your guts. Raw Ugh. meat will have a little bit. And we're giving you the booty rate diet. Yes. Right Did you now. talk about booty rate? We were talking about booty rate. Get a little cheeky on this? Much oh better booty rate. That's so amazing for your gut. You just don't even know. I was right, this like is probably your exciting conversation of leaky gut. It was. I know. Nobody wants to tune in about leaky gut, but tune back into leaky gut because I gave you the secrets on how to increase booty right. rate. Right. I just like saying booty rate. No. Booty raid, booty raid. Mm -hmm. But you cannot take an exogenous straight up of no, booty raid. That's why you have to tune into like, healthy, happy hour. Go back right? and listen to the other stuff. Uh -huh. Save me breath. Now. It's up on the podcast. Super yes. important. Mm -hmm. Super healthy gut is super skinny person. So a lot of people also talk about, yep, this is going to, by eating meat, it's going to increase my cholesterol levels. Cholesterol is going to kill me. Guess what you need cholesterol. Guess what you do. So I, like, your eyes. You I, like, I rolled my whole head on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked on this one a couple of weeks ago, but dietary cholesterol does not appear to raise cholesterol in most people and those who would, well, actually, I, I already lied on that one. It raises HDL, the good cholesterol, in everybody. 30% of people, it will raise a little bit of the LDL, but it still raises the HDL cholesterol, so you're still getting a more positive ratio of that good to bad cholesterol. Now, my cholesterol might be slightly over 200. Is that a bad thing? 
I think that's fantastic. I personally would prefer you closer to 220. I concur. I'm not surprised. It's for testosterone people. Again, a lot of guys, when they go on low-fat diets because they're hitting middle age or they just want to lose weight. Or their wife made them. Their wife made them. Yep. And then the wife gets angry when they can't perform in the bedroom because they have no mm -hmm. testosterone. You need that cholesterol. Feed your men meat. I'm just saying. Feed your men You'll meat be so happier. you can be fed your man You'll meat. You'll be happier. You will be happier. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, it goes right over the beauty brain's run mm -hmm. head of what I just said. I didn't hear you. His exactly. meat went right over your head. You're welcome. Just over the head? <laughs> Uh, another big thing that people talk about saying you're going to eat a bunch of meat, you're going to have this. And earlier on in like, uh, my education, I did believe this one too, was can cause kidney damage if you have too much protein. Uh, but here's wrong. Um, Bull crap. Fun, mm -hmm. fun little analogy, instead of just saying it's wrong, is if you have a already have a kidney or a liver issue, then maybe you don't want to go high protein because it's not working at a well, it could. It's not functioning well. It's not efficient. When you have high protein, it does make your kidney and liver work a little harder. So as long as it's already healthy, you're good to go. Right. I like comparing it to jogging. The idea of you can go for a jog. Yeah. Jogging is great. It's more effort on your legs than sitting. I would not go jog on a broken leg. That's going to be bad. Same concept yeah. with this. You can eat a lot of protein. It's going to make your kidneys work a little harder, but that's fine. You're allowed to work those organs. They're there. If it's already damaged, broken, then it's going to be bad. So as long as you're healthy enough to have a high protein diet, and if you feel well, if you find your albumin levels are actually higher, which may be indicative of some type of kidney damage, drink more water first, get it retested after you've been drinking, general rule of thumb, take your body weight, divide it in half, that's how much water in ounces should be drinking. It's, it's just a rule of thumb. It's really a general, general, good one, general, general one, but if you're not quite sure, start there. Yeah, I mean, even with me, when you eat more protein, you do need more water. Like I've had uh, a little over a gallon a day, and I'm borderline hydrated. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I drank a couple gallons a day, and I was just sucking it down, sucking it down, sucking it down. Mm -hmm. it, it can happen. Yeah, so I mean, drink more water. It's going to be really hard to overdo it. It keeps that you one. fuller, and it keeps you from eating stuff you're not supposed to eat. Now I'm going to keep you both on your tones. On your tones. Oh, Ooh, I like being on my tones. What kind of tone? This is Fun Friday. Let's, let's just embarrass the guy that decided let's have Fun Friday. Great idea. Uh, tone me. Most. Okay, tone me, honey. Tone me. Anyway. Is a ketogenic diet a carnivore diet? Is a carnivore diet a ketogenic diet? Why, why not both ways? Go both ways, Dr. Mike. I, uh, I'll go both ways. Here on camera. Which one should I go? I can't go both ways at the same time. That's kind of the whole idea of going both ways. No, uh, no, and no. <laughs> I went three ways. <laughs> I don't know how it's possible. And she knew for all of it. All right. Are you doing science? Side life for fun. Anyway, all right. Is a, so, keto is a carnivore diet a ketogenic diet? Why or why not? Technically, maybe. Beautiful. That's the answer I would have went with as well. What do we need before? We say the same crap. <laughs> we really do. <laughs> well, um, it's more fun so this way. In some people, yes. Some people, no. There hasn't been a... The research is starting to come out a little bit more. Really, we just need more on this to find out for sure. But it appears that some people, when you have X amount of protein, X is still all over the place, that it will kick you out of ketosis because it is well known that you have too much protein, it's got to store something. We don't store protein stores directly, we mostly have glycogen and fat. Protein tends to go the glycogen route. So we go gluconeogenesis, we're making, we're making sugar in our body. Some people, when that's on a higher level, can kick us out of ketosis. It doesn't appear to do that for everyone. Verdict is still kind of out on that. So it's a maybe if it doesn't go into gluconeogenesis, and then sure, it's keto. Mm -hmm. If it does kick you out from gluconeogenesis, then no, it's not keto. So there's everything I've seen, Finnick and Foley, Finnick Foley, oh geez, Volick, Finney and Volick, I sniffed it too. Um, it's like glue. No, they say like 0 0.5 to 3, oh, okay. and you're in ketosis. ketosis. Technically, if you have a ketone, 0.1, millimoles per liter of blood, you got ketones in your blood. Small, but 
more has been shown to even go up to, say, five millimoles per liter of ketones in your blood. And the higher you go, the more benefits you have. Now, a lot of meat, though, is a lot of protein, and that's going to typically bring you down. Would that be correct? Yeah, 100% correct. Why? I'm, I'm not eating carbs, so therefore, I should be fine, right? Sure, but you're still metabolizing, breaking stuff in. Insulin's going to pull everything into one spot. I mean, if I could just eat a bunch of, if we check my ketone levels right now, and I have just pure fat, mm -hmm. I would still expect that to go down a little bit, even though I just ate a fat source. Uh, short of it is, well, actually, there's a lot of to shorten this one. Uh, it varies for the individual. I don't know what you're looking for on this one. But when you eat food, your no, body does no, different no, things. So when you eat before or after, it will change your ketone levels. It doesn't mean you're out of ketosis. But right. also, if you take a blood glucose meter right now when I'm in ketosis, and there's blood glucose in my blood, does that now mean that I'm not in ketosis because I'm using sugar? No, but it depends on where your ketones are. Is your body utilizing ketones or not? I mean, if you're if you got ketones and your strip is not purple, doesn't mean that you know from a urinalysis mm -hmm. that you're not in ketosis. Your body's actually using them over time. You, you can be in full ketosis. Mm -hmm. You can have five millimoles, and you may be using them all. If you're using them all, then you urine don't have at least says right. you don't have an excess. They're also checking different ketones. I mean, the pea strips check, uh, I think it's acetate, and oh, yeah. then the bloody one does hydroxybutyrate. They act different, they're different things. The butyrate tends to be the longer energy, it's the one that we seem to use the most, and that most ketones try to convert into. So it's checking different things. Uh, the blood is far more accurate to show through ketosis. And a lot of it also has to do with the direct proportional relationship of your hormones, um, insulin here in this case, mm -hmm with what you're taking in. So insulin and carbs, it's gonna obviously come up through that. Protein, the more protein you have, the more, as you said, because it's thrusting into the yeah, cells. Because you, you do get an insulin response from having a lot of protein. Yeah. That's actually something I do with uh, some of my diabetic patients, trying to increase the protein a little bit. It helps control their insulin levels mm -hmm. for a while. Now, fat's the only macronutrient where insulin's not gonna be raised. And insulin is also proportional to your ketones. The more ketones you have, lower insulin typically, and vice versa. Yes. Yep. So inversely proportional, I should say. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Uh, how about autophagy? Autophagy? This is another fun autophagy. one. I almost didn't put this in. I know. You been... wanted to put it in, so I had to hit it. Yeah. So fasting. Hit it. It's we slipped fasting. in. Fasting. Um, so there's been a little bit of early research that shows, that suggests that having a high protein diet may increase autophagy, autophagy, I swear to pronounce it different different time. Are you going to be proper pinkies up about it or are you going to just go for it? Bottoms up. Bottoms, Bottoms up, up. Autophagy. Bo autophagy. If you want to go to Target to shop instead of Target, it's autophagy. Autophagy. Can I go autophagy? I don't know. It's whatever one I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, most. You previous. drinking beer or fine cognac? Which one is it? They're a little different, aren't they, Jim? Yeah, they are, just like autophagy and autophagy. Both ways you get drunk. Autophagy. Autophagy. Not a direct comparison. I'm not going to argue this one. Right now. I'm just trying to use metaphors so, here in a little bit. Yeah, I was thinking. Target, target, whatever. Some research shows that having high protein increases this. <laughs> I don't know if this is true yet. The studies I saw were very small. I'm not completely sold on the idea, but it got me kind of excited. I think it's really cool if it does happen that way. Tell way. me, tell like me, what is, penis. what is autophagy? Mm. No, I'm done answering this one. I think I answered this question last week. Okay, well, for people that didn't see last week. Or here saw. last week. So it's when your cells decide to eat itself, but it's a very positive thing. Yes. Cleans up the debris. Detoxification, really. Yes. One that your body's actually made to do. How happens when we start fasting? Or possibly having about 80% uh, calories from protein. Verdict is still out. I'm very curious. So there's reasons to do things. There's reasons not to do things. Reasons not to do your homework is because you want to have mommy daddy issues and you want to show them that you're going to fail something to get the attention. In this case here, yeah, it's a dumb idea. So in this <laughs> case here, why might you not want to eat meat primarily or just go balls to the wall and have a fully carnivore diet? Half the main reasons I had, I already slipped in there uh, with meat about if you had a kidney or no kidney or mm -hmm. liver issue, probably not. 
Another one is if you have gout. You might want to be very careful in the way you do this. So this is one thing that red meat will promote um, due to uric acid building up. The other one is, only other big thing I could think of off the top of my head is if your religion that you, you're followed through it says not to. Those are the really biggest sure reasons. Uh, those are the biggest reasons I had. Mm -hmm. um, I like meat. Like, meat Texan is what we do. Thank those vegetarians every day. Nice. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite cheers. You, my favorite cheers I've heard. That was great. That that might have been one of my best moments. <laughs> so, yes. how about supplements? Likely supplements to assist with eating the, a crap ton of meat. The biggest one in my mind would be vitamin C, because there's pretty much none in most meats. Even I was trying to look to see if there's something I missed with certain. A fraction in liver and eggs. Right? Yeah, liver got, got some. I'm sure you're not eating liver every day, even if you are, it's probably not enough. You'll develop gout, most likely. Most likely. Yeah. <laughs> Vitamin C would be the one that I would push most for. Because uh, it's not at all in the diet. Right. It'll also help you absorb the iron. Uh, yeah, that's, that's huge. huge. Vitamin C. You need it. Mm -hmm. We get scurvy. Orange yeah, you don't want to be like a don't. <laughs> So that's the big one. Like I said, uh, booty rate. We talked about a little bit. Uh, the other one is some form of prebiotics. Fiber supplements are not nearly the same as eating it. Most of them are. You can find a good one. Here's one that we can twist your this nipples on this. No. For a, a prenatal infant, that is correct. So, how about the fact that? A lot of individuals who live primarily on meat typically don't supplement with jack squat. So Inuits, as we were talking about before, they're eating mostly meat, mostly whale blubber. Mm -hmm. It's actually been shown that there are they are getting enough in the meat who's consuming it from other source. What do you feel about that? Consuming fat soluble vitamins will store in a lot of fat. Inuits eat a their meat that they eat. Far fattier than most of the meat that we carnivores right. here see. I've not seen any carnivores eat whale blubber. Like, I mean, you see it all a lot on social media. I, I don't see them do that. Their quality of meat is going to have more good stuff in it. I mean, they they evolved, dare I say that dirty word, to have this stuff. I mean, their livers are also larger. Uh, well, you know, it worked a lot more. But it really just comes down to they got great fat sources. So let's talk also about types of meat. Chicken. Chicken is the, the meat of the Meat of the world. Yeah. Everyone wants chicken, low fat, high protein, chicken. How do you feel about that when it comes to inflammation? You yes. know, the, the oh. cause of all diseases. Sky high. My big thing is if eat the skin. Like I'm huge on eat the chicken skin. Yes. I've had people come brag to me they don't eat it and I throw them all so bad like, oh why? It's and the it, best part, one, people. It's delicious. Chicken skin tacos, awesome buddy. Mm -hmm. Um and it has healthy fats are anti-inflammatory, oleic acid, right in olive oil. So that was always fun when I was full chicken skin that would be hard to go, just like olive oil. And I was like, oh yeah, well no, that's not. And then it leads them all that from a lot. So another, another tip for a lot of individuals. Chicken, since it's grain fed majorly, is high in omega-6 arachidonic acid, which is gonna cause inflammation, the cause of all diseases. Mm -hmm. My suggestion to you is just a free-range wild chicken. Just like turkey, free range turkey. wild turkey. That one that is eating, eating bugs. bugs and worms Rats. and Rats. not finished with beef. Yeah, it oh, not finished with beef. That would be great for the chicken, right? <laughs> <laughs> not finished I'll with grapes. Before we slaughter it. Yeah. The idea is let it just be au natural. In nature. Yeah. I mean, as you yeah, mentioned, it's going to be more expensive. No joke about it. It is going to be yes. more expensive. The farmers cannot get as much pop per pound if you would but longevity says you might so well as you said earlier you you know the meat that you eat has what that ate in it so right. they're eating better sources then you're gonna uh, get better deer is actually a good example for this one is that uh i believe it was deer in northern pa has far more omega-3s than they actually do here in new jersey due to just what they eat they found out that deer in jersey eat a lot more garbage um so then the, even though it's wild here, mm -hmm. the nutrient level is different because it's eating different things. Also, there's a lot more carnivorous deer 
in upstate New York in PA because there's less, the theory is that there's less garbage litter from the heat. They actually do eat birds, believe it or not. Like deer do eat some meat when they need to. So they get extra nutrients that aren't just from eating plants and grains and people's corn cornfields. How about cow? I mean, cows a heck of a lot cheaper, crap ton cheaper mm -hmm. if it's just grain fed. Or even if you see grass fed, a lot more but not way. grass finished, great. You've been, they've been out free ranging. They get on a train to be processed, yep. and then they feed them Stop. within the last oh, two weeks uh, of the GMO grains. It, so the whole grass fed part doesn't even matter by that point. Right. Grass fed means at some point it ate grass. It could have been the whole time through, it could have been a week at the beginning, a week at the end. Huge thing. Same thing with free range chickens. It means they had access to it. Right. It means the door was open, but all their generations stayed in there. They've got broken legs because they're pasture raised is where you they want to go with your chickens. Yes. It's marketing. Yes. Unfortunately, no, it's really what it comes down Organic to is probably one of the worst things you can do. It's like the bottom of the barrel, people. Yeah. Baseline. When it comes yeah. to meat, when it comes to meat, including fish, fowl, and beef, organic is not what you're going for. It really is. And don't do anything farm raised. Fish yeah, don't farm raised fish. come from farms. Remember that. Fascinating. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> I, I got it. So it's fascinating when people think organic fish, it's, yeah, it's fed organic grain, far higher again in omega-6 arachidonic acid, which is inflammation. inflammation and the cause of all diseases. Or the fish was fed organic Oreos, organic pop mm -hmm. Now you're just getting silly. Saying stuff like that makes me realize it's about time to wrap up Fun Friday. I saw what time it was and made me say things like that. Crap. <laughs> It's all good. The same stuff. Okay. You got sushi, don't you? We, we do. have sushi waiting for us in about uh, less than six minutes. Right. I am on <laughs> my way. All right. As always, I'm going to say thank you, thank you, thank you, because I mean it. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Buddha, over there. We are <laughs> going to be coming out with a lot, crap ton more of great stuff, great content for you. Share it. The best way of caring is sharing. Is so Got a lot of fun events that we're starting to plan here at Functionize from, we're not quite sure, from wing eating contest to pie eating contest, something where there's going to be a contest during football season outside with big screen TVs watching football and Plenty football. parties. Yes, but I guarantee, this part I can guarantee, can't guarantee a cure for disease, but I can guarantee we'll be serving meat. Booyah! George, mm. George. Georgia, the fifth land. <laughs> Georgia, the fifth land. It's time for some brisket. Yes. So I will lead our way out of here. Bye. All right. <laughs> Dr. Mike out. Peter Wayne's brought out. <laughs> Your mad scientist, once again, I am out and live functionized. So Eat your meat.